is in pity. That's um, pretty normal though. If I fell asleep on you, I'm sorry. <laughs> There's not been a lot of sleep last night. What's the back? Oh, she's not here. Ready? Is this gonna rub on my dress? No. The dress with a touch. Okay. So do you wanna go aside a little bit? Do you wanna go aside? Okay, which side? Not to the side, but like just kinda like I naturally wear it. Okay. Alright, cool. Perfect. Um, First one in the front. Well, so I think actually it's not bad. Are you planning on having it flip over no. your head? Okay. No. Okay. We'll curl it first. Okay, and then we'll yeah. play with it. Okay. No one's vegetarian, right? But the smell of my socks is horrible. Oh, <laughs> gotcha. It's been all day in, in the work boot. Hey, we're gonna be wearing matching socks. <laughs> you wearing the same ones? Yeah. We should tell Alex your socks are amazing. Good choice. Yeah. James. It was a, it was a acne mark that hit a straight razor. It's the one problem using that thing. Mm. Six inches of I don't care cutting. <laughs> Not only shit, your rubber putty works. Yeah, the shirt looks good with those pants. Yeah. It brings out. Does not yeah. your eyes are like coffee. You know what also brings out your eyes? They're claws. Dark. Claws bring out your eyes very effectively. This is true. <laughs> that was really good. Oh fuck. You. <laughs> fuck you. Are you and Alex doing vests? Yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, my morning was chaotic. Do you invest in vests? Well, no. Spilled nonsense on my shirt. <clears throat> Couldn't use it anymore. Thought I'd pick up another one. Turns out I left my jacket and my tie at home. Well, there's a whole series of ties over there if you haven't already picked one out of the one you're borrowing. Well, the sad fact is I don't actually know how to tie my own tie because I never have to wear ties. I love those shoes. Thank you. It's also pretty, pretty rare a guy says, Mike, I love those shoes. Actually, <laughs> it's shoes. about the only time in my life that I've heard someone say, Mike, I love those shoes. Well, with those shoes? Those shoes are awesome. I managed it's to hide back here, hi. It's actually really hard to get a shot of you laughing. So I got you laughing. Uh, I gotta get a shot of it now. I <laughs> just had to make a joke. These no. jokes are hilarious. Oh, they're okay. horrible. It's the death. How often has a man told you to just turn around and implicitly trust him? A little ponytail back it's here. It's really actually kind of... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a freak. Now you're just playing with me. No. Oh, 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 James. You know what that... <laughs> and remember, I would think it's just like, okay, the girls are doing things. You have two and a half hours. You're putting on socks, taking off socks, oh, putting on socks, so taking off socks, so putting on socks. <laughs> I'm wearing. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Mine socks. I'm, I'm yeah, there, right. Just that right amount of dead tired and nervous energy. Right? Nothing makes you more prepared than sleep deprivation. <laughs> it's sort of like, you know, that, that, that vigor that a man has on his way to the gallows, you know? <laughs> yeah. The um, class guys <laughs> will never forgive me if I let me get away with a single one. Take your glasses really quick. Helipad in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. And not the only one. How many barons does Sealand have? No, all right. Um, at this point, I don't actually know. It's probably like six or seven thousand. Yeah. Right, we leave here, go to a car. We go to the <laughs> hotel by the airport, stay there, and we fly out in the morning to yeah, Vietnam. Man. Yeah. So we land, land at Hanoi, and then uh, from there uh, we get picked up by uh, a private car that takes us to uh, Bai, Bai, Bai Tulong Bay, which is big area, big rock spires. What was that? I do. Where? I'll pass a few out. Here, anything? Well, they should sit right it's like a little collar, Aww. and uh, it's her underneath layer is from my dress. It's the same. Oh thing. really? Yeah. So we got the oh match. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. The cutest and thing I've ever heard. It's decorated with the same necklace I'll be, no bracelet that I'll be wearing. So we're what kind of dog? Golden doodle. A golden doodle. Ah, yeah. oh, I love those. Aww. She's very hyper, so she will probably jump on everybody. Just tell her no jump. Come here! Hi! Crazy boy! Come here! I can't see you! Come here, baby girl! 
We're working on oh. Seems like a long time, but nothing seems like a long time when I am with you. I feel like I'm walking on water since the day that I asked your father to let go of his daughter. So give me your blessing, sir. I'll give her all that I've got. Doesn't look like much, but it sure feels like a lot. Let her take my heart and take my hand. Take my heart and take my hand. Take my heart and take my hand again and again. Right. everyone. I would like to welcome you to the wedding of <laughs> Denitsa Cherekovich <laughs> and James Thomas Walter McGrew. My name is Eric Zimmerman. I will be conducting today's service. Here it comes. <clears throat> <laughs> Mowage! 
Marriage is what brings us together today. <laughs> Marriage, that blessed arrangement, <laughs> that dream within a dream, and love, true love, will follow you forever. <laughs> so treasure your love. As humorous as the quote is, it does get to the heart of why we are here today to celebrate true love expressed as the joining of two individuals in marriage. Marriage, which is a commitment between two people to live in such a way as to bring out the best in each other, offer opportunities for sharing and growth that no other relationship can equal. It is a physical and emotional joining that is promised for a lifetime. Within the circle of its love, marriage encompasses all of life's most important relationships. A wife and a husband are each other's best friend, confident, lover, teacher, listener, and critic. Marriage deepens and enriches every aspect of life. Yet at its heart, it exists on a foundation that is rooted in one thing above all else, love. Love is the thing we all share. It's the great unifier. No matter who we are or where we've come from or what we believe, we know this one thing. Love is what we seek and strive for. And it is the very best part of what makes us human. That is why James and Denise stand here before you today. And that is why you are all here as witnesses to watch them promise to share a lifetime of love for each other. Ever since that initial meeting when they first laid eyes on each other, you both felt and knew that there was something attractive, intriguing, and special about the other person. That meeting has led you here to exchange vows and charter a course for life together as husband and wife. Whether it's the milestones in a relationship, like saying, I love you, getting engaged, or agreeing to commit your lives to one another, or it's a million little things that come in between those big events, falling asleep next to one another, making dinner together, spending holidays with your families, or getting a big hug when you get home from a long day of work. These everyday moments fuse together into one big experience that grow two people as a couple. And grow you both have as individuals. Who you were five and a half years ago to who you are now has changed and evolved in a direction that would be completely different had you not been in each other's lives. I personally have seen each of you mature in your love for one another in new and surprising ways. For example, Denitza, you have learned to tolerate James other distant true love, that of firearms and shooting, <laughs> and smelling like gunpowder when he comes back from the shooting range. James, you've learned to like Denise pinching your cheeks when she thinks you look so irresistibly adorable. Denise, you have learned to endure James's awful puns and bad dad jokes. James, you have learned to love waking up to the smell of Denitza cooking breakfast, only to learn it was just for the dog. <laughs> See? Growth! May you continue to tolerate, like, endure, love, and always do better for each other. Laugh with one another, and sharpen each other as iron sharpens iron on this journey together that is before you. Before these witnesses, I ask you both to commit to treat yourself and the other with respect and remind yourselves often of what brought you together today in the spirit of Ephesians 4.2. That states, be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. This shall be the core of your marriage. May you always have love at the foremost of your interactions. Give the highest priority to the tenderness, gentleness, and kindness that your marriage deserves. And may you always be gracious with each other as you embark on this new odyssey as a couple. Excuse me. I would now ask out of all of these gathered here that if anyone can show just cause why these two shall not be lawfully joined together, let them speak now or forever hold their peace. <laughs> no? Well, then we'll move right along. James and Denisa would like to share the vows they have written for one another on this day. So, Denisa? You're up first. <clears throat> I 
I just want you to know, I'm writing this after many thoughts and rough drafts as you sit in on your computer computer playing some horrible video game. <laughs> and I'm behind you on the couch with Daisy being lazy next to me. So just a few months ago. The day that I decided to marry you, without a doubt, was a random afternoon weekend. Late 2013, early 2014, when we were cleaning our apartment. Sorry, was it in Paris or something more romantic? <laughs> and I took a break and sat on our living room couch. It was a quiet day, but nothing special going on, and to this day, that moment of watching you is, is time-stamped in my mind. I know exactly what you were wearing, the sound the fish tank make, to the smell in the air, because in that small window of time, I made the biggest decision in my life. And you didn't even know it until now. <laughs> As I've watched you clean the kitchen counter within your bed in one year, probably listen to some dead guy give a college lecture about economics or something. <laughs> <laughs> it all felt natural and light and right. It was this feeling to this day that I don't know how to describe into words and trust me I've tried it many times. As I was watching you I had this feeling come over me and it was a new feeling that I've never felt before. It was just something inside of me that said this is my forever, this is the rest of my life. And it made me ridiculously happy and I decided without any hesitations for the first time I wanted, I wanted you to be my forever. I wanted you to be mine for the rest of my life. I saw my life with you. I saw us having a dog. I saw us having kids. <laughs> I saw us expanding our own traditions, getting married, and all came at once. And I took a moment, came up to you, and you just gave me the biggest bear hug for a few seconds, kissing the top of my head and told me ever so kindly that if I wanted to love you the same way you love me, you could not be distracted from your task of being the kitchen counter. <laughs> Clean kitchen or not, I love you more. All those visions I have, I have had of us are finally here. We're becoming our own family. And I'm so blessed and fortunate that it's with you, someone who has patience, unconditional support, kindness, and love that is ever growing. I can't promise you that every day will be easy as this, or that the kitchen counter will always be clean. But what I can do promise you is that with every challenge that we face, I will conquer it with you and learn from it with you. I promise not just to grow old with you, but to grow with you as time and life changes as both. I promise I will do my best to support every James idea that you have, and to really <laughs> laugh at your not funny doubt jokes. <laughs> I promise to love you, support you, and encourage you every step of the way as we build down our own family together. I promise to put your advice into consideration, even though I may not always take it. And even though there will be times when I won't always like you, I will always love you. You're the greatest gift I have been so fortunate to receive in my lifetime. And my truest friend, I promise to always do the hard work of making now last until forever. I take you with my full heart as my husband, my forever, my forever love, and buddy in life. Just for her. <laughs> you know, <coughs> <not> for you. <laughs> I, got it. I got it memorized. Oh. So I've. Uh, I've never been as eloquent about my feelings as you have. Uh, every year with Valentine's Day, Christmas, I try to write you a card, I get three or four lines, and you have just pages. <laughs> so I tried to, to concentrate my vows into these words, and that I, I vow to love you, I vow to cherish you, I vow to protect you and provide for you, but I'm going to lean on you because I need you. And I vow to be there for you to lean on me too. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> At this time, if I could please get the best man and the matron of honor to present the rings. The ring is a symbol of the unbroken circle of love. Love freely given has no beginning and no end, no giver and receiver. For each is the giver and each is the receiver. May these rings always remind you of the vows that you now take. As you both in this next moment take these rings as the ultimate sign of your commitment to each other, I want you to think through the words that I'm going to ask you to repeat after me. So James, 
I'm going to start with you. And as you put the ring on Denise's finger, I want you to repeat after me. I, James Thomas Walter McGrew. I, James Thomas Walter McGrew. Take Danitsa Cherekovich. <laughs> take Danitsa Cherekovich. <laughs> to be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. Okay. Go ahead. And to live together in marriage. To be my wedded wife and to live together in marriage. I promise to love her, comfort her, honor and keep her for better or for worse. I promise to love her, comfort her, honor and keep her for better or for worse. For richer or for poorer. For richer or for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. And forsaking all others. And forsaking all others. Be faithful to her for as long as we both shall live. Be faithful to her for as long as we both shall live. James, do you affirm and agree to these vows mm -hmm. so long as you shall live in the presence of God and these witnesses? I do. And Denita, as you place the ring that you have for James on his finger, I want you to repeat after me. I, Denita Cherekovich. I, Denita Cherekovich. Take James Thomas Walter McGrew to be my wedded husband. Take James Thomas Walter McGrew to be my wedded husband. And to live together in marriage. And to live together in marriage. I promise to love him. I promise to love him. Comfort him. Comfort him. Honor and keep him for better or for worse. Honor and keep him for better or for worse. For richer or poorer. For richer or for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. And forsaking all others. And forsaking all others. Be faithful to him so long as we both shall live. Be faithful to him for as long as we both shall live. Denitza, do you affirm and agree to these vows I do. so long as you shall live <laughs> in the presence of God and these witnesses? I do. <laughs> <laughs> At this time, would the signatories please come forward for the signing of the marriage contract? Um, just to explain this next step, Denitza and James have decided to formalize their union with a handwritten contract. The terms of their marriage are enshrined upon this vellum sheet, which they will display, framed in their home to remind them of the commitment of which they make here to each other on this day. The signatories here were asked to witness this document and to promise to remind both Denitza and James to live up to the spirit of this agreement. If you would like to see the document yourself, it will be on display later this evening at the couple's table. <laughs> Thankful for it.
By the authority vested in me, by the great state of California, witnessed by your friends and family, I now pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss the groom. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, assembled here as witnesses and guests, it is my distinguished pleasure and honor to introduce to you the happy couple, Mr. and Mrs. McGrew. This concludes the swearing-in ceremony. Please join the couple and their parents for cocktails and hors d'oeuvres on the patio overlooking the pool. To get there, go up the tan stairs, turn right, and go by the rocking chairs and through the gate to see the patio overlooking the pool. Uh, also, all the people who have been invited to photos should meet in the driveway in front of the planner to the left as they exit. Thank you. Burn some holes in the dance floor. Oh, yeah, no, we're <laughs> Think you're one of a kind Here's to you The one that always pulls us through Always do what you gotta do You're one of a kind Thank God you're mine You're an angel dressed in armor You're the fear in every fight 
You're my life and my safe harbor Where the sun sets every night And if my love is blind I don't want to see the light It's your beauty that betrays you Your smile gives you away Cause you're made of strength and mercy And my soul is yours to say I know this much is true When my world was dark and blue I know the only one who rescued me was you Close your eyes Let me tell you all the reasons why You're never gonna have to cry Because you're one of a kind Speech starting here. Yeah. My name is Doran Cerekovic, and I'm father of Danica Cerekovic, now woman of James McGrew. Thank you for coming to make this beautiful evening so nice and so good and so beautiful. When Danica told me that I need to, to give a speech, I asked how long. <laughs> I thought 25 minutes. <laughs> when Danica said that, two, three minutes at least. I said, oh my God, what is going on two, three minutes? So, I would like to share with you only two very important moments in our lives, in my family life. First is how we get to America. We all born and raised in Serbia, in former Yugoslavia. And I joined the US company in Belgrade, ICM Pharmaceutical, in early 90s. And one day, I got a call from Moscow. Boom. Not Putin. I got a call from Jack Scholl, senior vice president for human resource and, uh, and uh, public relations in ICM Pharmaceutical. In, uh, ICM Pharmaceutical was a company from Costa Mesa in Orange County. And he told me, oh, Zoran, what are you doing, etc., etc. And he told me, Zoran, I have good, two news for you. One is bad, one is good. I said, okay, Jack, tell me the first bad news. He told me, Zoran, there is no Stolichnaya vodka in Moscow. I said, how is possible? It's impossible, you know. Okay, but don't worry. We will buy, find it in Belgrade. 
And he said, it, that is good news for me. Okay, tell me then what is good news. And he said, Zoran, do you want to go to America for one year in Costa Mesa in headquarters? And I was pretty surprised. And they said, are you kidding with me? He said, no, I'm serious. We are coming tomorrow to Belgrade. And uh, Mr. Panic, president of the company, will talk with you about that. Oh my God, America, one year California baby. Uh, immediately, what should I do? I call my wife. And I said, strangely, bluntly, Dragica, do you want to go to vacation for one year in California? <laughs> and she said, yes. <laughs> no other questions, yes. I said, okay, we will talk to tomorrow. And tomorrow, Mr. Panic really called me. And he said, Zoran, I need you in the headquarters in Costa Mesa. Would you like to go? I said, yes, of course. But only with, under one condition. And she, he said, what condition? I said, family is going with me. And he said, of course, you are a married man. And on, it was in uh, February 2092. Uh, 1992, no, sorry. No, 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 no. 98. 98, sorry. I'm excited, very excited today. So you can see that. And on May 28th, can you imagine? May 28th, today is April 28th. We took the flight from Amsterdam to Los Angeles and start our life in America. I had agreement for one year, but they gave me one year more, then bad, thing, bad things happened in Yugoslavia and we decided to stay forever. So now we are still vacationing and camping in California almost 20 years. There's the first story. Second story, one of the most beautiful and important moment in my life. November 9th, last year, late evening, I, I just come, came back from Serbia from two weeks trip in Serbia in Belgrade. I was pretty exhausted. Uh, flight was pretty bumpy. 11 hours London to LAX, three hours Belgrade, London. And I was, I was full of impression. I met my old friends from my high school. I brought a lot of family old pictures and sharing that pictures with uh, Dragica, my beautiful wife. And all, I heard the doorbell. I asked Dragica, who is coming? Are we, invite, are we inviting someone? Are we expecting someone? She said, no, I don't know who is that. I opened the door and James said the door, alone. I said, oh, James, you, how are you doing? What's going on? Where are the, the, the Danica and Daisy? <laughs> and he said something, but they didn't care too much. And OK, get in. I was excited to show him my old photos, you know, with the hair like here, like, like William in his uh, students' days and early 20s, <laughs> rock and roll time all over the world. But James was excited and he was uh, not interested too much to, to, to look the photos. And one moment he told me, Zoran, I would like to talk with you. I said, okay, what do you want? <laughs> and he said, but not here. Where do you want them? At porch. 
okay at porch, right? I was pretty amazed, astonished, right at porch. I have no any secrets, you know, with my wife. <laughs> okay, let's. We get out at the porch, close the door. Porch was in total dark. James was in jeans in his uh, favorite shirt. This time with the sneakers, not barefoot. <laughs> and I said, okay, what's going on? Tell me what's going on. I thought something's happened, you know. It's... And he said, Zoran, I would like to ask you for permission to marry your daughter, Danica. Oh my God, that's it. I was very surprised with the question because I didn't expect that James will ask me to marry my daughter Danica because they lived together three years. <laughs> but okay. But okay. And then I start beginning very excited percent of my body of me was joyful very happy but second 50 percent of me was very sad telling me oh don't give up my god how not to give up that james is asking to marry my daughter danica and i said to myself Okay, James, I cannot give up in a three minutes or in 15 seconds to give me my to give you my daughter for woman to marry. Let's dance a little bit. <laughs> and I didn't know actually how to dance <laughs> with James because it, this is first time in my life that someone asked me to marry my daughter. And then I remember Dirty Harry Detective. You know, the Clint Eastwood, Dirty Harry movies. When he stand like this and said, yes, and? And I took the same pose and I said, yes, and? And James was very surprised, very surprised. You know. In that moment, I suppose he thinks, oh my God, this old man is deaf, or he didn't understand what I'm talking about. That's why he stepped all to his feet and said slowly, but uh, sorry for my good English. He said again, he repeat again, Zoran, I would like to ask you to marry your daughter Danica. And I was in a corner now, I have to answer, you know. <laughs> yes or no? 50% of, my, of myself told me, don't give up, don't give up. <laughs> and I said again, yes, and talk to me, man, talk to me. And James was astonished. Me too. And he gets closer to me again and told me, Zoran, I cannot imagine my life without Danica. And it was total knockout for me, punched to my, like Cassius Clay punched me in the top of my chin. I said, this is the end. You know why? Because it's same I thought when I met my wife. I cannot imagine my wife life without this girl. But again, 50% of me told me, don't give up. <laughs> and then I said, I raised my hand like Mr. Trump, but left hand, I need to think. 
And James was totally astonished, totally. You know, what I told him, James, only two seconds. I need to think only two seconds. I love you, I know you, I respect you, you have my permission. And he was, ah, you know. But I lost my voice. I didn't know how to tell Dragica. I opened the door. I tried to tell her that I, this is my, my, uh, my future son-in-law. And I think James told her, yes, Zoran gave me permission to marry Danica. And Dragica says every woman, ah, nice, beautiful, ah, James, boom, hug me, hug him. And here we are now. It was in November, November 9, last year. Thank you very much for patience, to listen to me, to listen to my beautiful English. Okay, thank you. Hi, everyone. Ooh, that's much louder than it was before. All right. Uh, I'm Colleen, James's sister, and also the maid of honor. And I just want to say thank you all for coming tonight. It's a great spot. <laughs> and um, I just wanted to start off by saying the first time I, very, I heard of Denitza was when James actually called me after your meeting on Halloween. I don't know if you remember that. And he told me that he not met her because he'd met her before, but had found this really special girl, and I thought it was really sweet for him to go out of his way and call me, and I knew it really meant something a lot um, for him to reach out to me like that. And ever since then, we just couldn't be happier to have Denisa in our family. Even before you guys were married, she's been Aunt Denisa to my kids and really has taken that true to heart. Hold on. And, um, and I just couldn't be happier to officially call her my sister, and I was so... <laughs> and it was just so amazing to see the way you looked at her up there, James. It was really sweet. So I just wanted to say I'm so happy for you guys. We really love you guys, and thank you for being such a wonderful part of our family, Denise. So we're really happy to have you guys. Thank you, guys. And there'll be a toast at the very end, so get your champagne. <laughs> Aaron. Good evening. My name is Aaron, you may have heard of me. <clears throat> James and I have known each other for quite some time now, coming up on 20 years, just about. And uh, we've had many a misadventure. Many. And over this time, I've learned that James has certain powers, certain superpowers, I would call them. A short list of them. James has the ability to tie two ropes together whilst lying flat on his back 30 feet below the pair. <laughs> he has the ability to touch metal that is hundreds of degrees in temperature. If you're asking if it burns him, yes. James has also had the unfortunate trend of being around cigarette lighters, or other forms of lighters, whenever they explode. <laughs> James and I have gotten up to a lot of crazy, crazy activities together. We cast metal, we try and engineer things. Sometimes they're successful. Rare. But at the same point, even when we're handling metal that's hundreds of degrees or miles away from any civilization with firearms <laughs> falling down a hill, I've always known that you have my back out there. I've never felt that there's any question to that. And Danitza, going forward in life, you have made a very wise choice. I wouldn't trust no one to watch my back in the rest of my life than James.
Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Eric Zimmerman. I probably already introduced myself earlier during the wedding ceremony. But uh, I have the distinguished honor of being the only person here who went to the International Jamboree in Thailand with James. Now, many of you may be thinking, well, you know, James, even kill guy, never done any risks, never done anything crazy, never <laughs> taken anything out of the ordinary. Well, let me tell you about New Year's Eve in Thailand. <laughs> so James and I, 13 at the time, young lads, we wanted to see fireworks. Except James, James wanted to be close to the fireworks. Now, I know what you're thinking. This is totally safe, right? We're Boy Scouts, you know, we, we abide by all the rules. Well, it's James. So here we are in Thailand. He goes over and he says, I want to get closer. Now, I'm thinking like, hey, you know, let's get like 500 feet, you know, 1,000 feet, something like that. No, 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 no. I want to get closer. So we duck under the barrier where we're not supposed to go because, you know, clearly that's what you do when you're an international Boy Scout jamboree in Thailand. And He's like, we need to get closer. We need to see these fireworks up close. I really want to experience this because if we don't, we're going to be missing out for the rest of our lives. Me, okay, let's do this. All right, I trust you. That was my first mistake. Now, granted, uh, I'll try to stick to Mark Twain here on this speech that I'm giving, you know. Uh, to quote him, a sermon and a speech should be very similar, a rousing introduction, a spectacular finish, very close together. So I'll try and keep to that. But here we are over in Thailand. We've ducked under the safeguards. We've ducked further to the safeguards that say don't enter. And we, we get within 20 feet of the fireworks, okay? So we're like, mind you, so here is where we're not supposed to be. We're here. Now, I'm there, and I'm thinking, oh, cool, we're just going to see it, like, go up, etc. No, 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 no. When they started firing, they were firing literally 10 feet over our head, okay? Now, I'm thinking, dear God in heaven, why? He looks at me and goes, perfect. <laughs> now, that's James. And so I'm thinking to myself, you know, as we got older and matured in our friendship, where is going to be a woman who's going to be able to equal this man? And then there's Denitza. Now, at first, when I first met you 10 years ago, you were so quiet. You were so nice and, and just even keeled. And little did I know, little did I know that you would be ending up marrying this man who almost killed me in Thailand. <laughs> and that right there pretty much sums up the relationship. So, jokes aside, congratulations you two on the lifetime you're going to take here. And make sure that the fireworks that you experience from now on up close are always within each other's eyes. Cheers. And now, Mr. McGrew. Well, I, I wanted to reassure you all because there was a question, you know, with the wind going on and the leaves falling and all that, but I, many of you may know my wife is actually a registered dietitian. You wouldn't know that by looking at me, but she actually has kept up her certification as a dietitian, and um, she has assured, assured me with her scientific skills that any of this these leaves that fall into your meal right now, the cellulose will be good for you. It's actually adding fiber to your diet, so I just want to make sure you're all okay with that, and it's all good, so be aware but I want to um, not only congratulate these two, and I'm going to come back to that in a second. I want to thank my wife, Peggy, <laughs> for all the love. I'm going to cry. I cry at bagpipes and conversations about my wife. So um, thank you for helping raise these kids the way you have. You're phenomenal. I want to thank the scout leaders that are here. 
that there's a lot of people that have helped raise our son that are here tonight. And I want to thank you for that, for all of your participation. But I want to thank Denitza in particular. Okay? Thank you, Denitza. We love you. Thank you for loving our son. I know that he is enamored about you, and justifiably so. So thank you guys. We wish you both all the best. You guys are a great couple, and you're going to do, do well together. And I want to want to thank you for, for loving our son. Okay? Thanks. So back to Colleen and maybe a toast. <laughs> That's the perfect lead-in for what I have here. Earlier this evening, uh, Denise's dad handed me this Serbian love poem, and I want to read it to you guys. It's, it's a wedding and love poem, but when you look into it, it's a lot about kind of what's in a marriage. Um, and I think it's also, as you guys will see as you move forward, every day of marriage is different, and your love grows stronger than it was the day before it. And every time you're going to go to a wedding, you're going to look at each other and think back to today. So I want you to think about that as, as I'm reading. All right, it's called On Marriage. Marriage is governed by law only when this can't be done any other way. So don't let law govern your marriage. Govern it yourselves better and more humanely than any law possibly could. We wish for you to enjoy yourselves, for it to last a long time, for you to rejoice in one another to live in the knowledge that today you accomplished one of the most unimportant lovely tasks in life. Our advice is to take your time, be sparing with both words and feelings. Don't spend them all at once. Spread your love and mutual respect across every day of your shared life. The law states that in marriage, husband and wife are equal. In other, better words, take on more responsibilities so as not to jeopardize the rights of others. Today's ceremony represents not only your mutual love, but also your individual and common interests. Marriage can't be an end in, in itself. Rather, it's just an opportunity for your other interests to be met more easily and completely. So keep building your relationship, expand its boundaries. Don't let it become withdrawn, lazy, drowsy to cease to live cease to live and to exist augment your shared life fight for a varied life be realistic and measured when determining your aims and aspirations and strong and persistent when it comes to realizing them you can't concern yourselves with love alone love is beautiful only when it is assumed <clears throat> when it follows all of our other activities when it gives us strength to actualize ourselves with the greatest success as personalities and as members of society. Be jealous, not of one another, but of your own marriage. Protect and defend it from all tribulations. Consider it precious for your future and happiness. Let this day be the happy beginning of your long and wonderful life together. And on that note, let's raise our glasses to the happy couple. To many, many, many years. We love you guys. Cheers. Yeah. 
Yes, please.